This is Chiezan, the prior at Sokokoji Buddhist Monastery. Sokozan offers these talks without expecting anything in return. If you value these talks and would like them to continue, please visit our donate page at www.sokokoji.org. Thank you. Good evening from Sokokoji Buddhist Temple Monastery. This evening's Dharma talk I've titled The Palm, Palm and the Fist. And using those images to talk a little bit about how the mind appears to work, not only according to Buddha Dharma, according to the 12 links on the chain of existence, and lots of other directions. But also, uh, that's how it looks over here. Different ways of looking at this, but I'll start out by saying this is a receiving uh, mudra. See, I'll go into the fist a little bit later. So to use the 12 links on the chain of existence, which the the monk training this weekend is about the 12 links. Uh, if you have an interest in that, you might want to tune in. Uh, each monk is taking a different part of this. Uh, Chazan and I have talked about this, about what would be a good way to um, help train monks to teach this material. It would be first have them research it, look at it. So that's what they've been doing, hopefully. So the area that I'm referring to here with the palm uh, receiving, we, we, we receive feelings. This is one of them. I think it's the seventh. Am I correct? You have been studying this. Uh, also called uh, Vedana or feelings but we receive the feelings. And I uh, would also be happy to receive from anyone out there, anyone who values what this situation has been about for quite a number of years now, this mandala, spiritual mandala, I would be happy to receive, this community would be happy to receive your support to help us continue in this way, continue to teach continue to train monks. Find a place where monks are being trained like this. Unlikely. I'm not saying they aren't being trained, but not like this. So if you see value here, I am on receive. <laughs> I'm on receive. Go to the website, as you know, and what do they have to do? Punch a button or something? Join. Join. Donate. Donate. Join too. <laughs> join? Do we have something to join? Hmm. Okay. Donate. Did I miss something? What? It's a mailing list. Join the mailing list? Oh, yeah. You could do that. So, uh, Vedana, feeling. We, we receive. We receive the feelings we feel. We feel. We don't really immediately block that necessarily. Even negative, difficult, painful, pain of pain feelings, pain of alternation feelings. Uh, if you are awareness is uh, opened up or you are along the path, you may even be have some understanding of the pain of the composite, which is not personal. This open palm, receive, receive. I always say when I teach Shikantaza, just receive, just, just observe, receive. If it shows up in your mind stream, it's yours. It's supposed to be there, has to be there, needs to be there, dependent origination. And the next one is uh, Krishna, sometimes I think called Tanha. I'm not sure, one is Pali and one is Sanskrit, I believe. Our, um, Chisho, do you know which is which? 
Jishwaring uh, Krishna would be Sanskrit. And then Tanha would be Pali? Uh, probably the Pali, yes. Okay. So that's, uh, uh, that's the desire of the grasping. And some teachers, some teaching, some way of doing this uh, 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 endeavor to get you to cut it off at the past. In other words, have the feeling, but then uh, no desire. Don't, don't, don't go to the next one. So somehow have some kind of intercession there. Uh, I teach it a little bit differently. I say, feel the desire, feel the craving, feel the lust, feel the hatred, feel the passion. If it shows up in your mind stream, feel it, think it, hear it, smell it, taste it, use all your senses. Everything should be on receive. You have nothing to fear. That doesn't mean you won't be afraid. So feeling, feeling, desire, desire. You actually receive the desire, the craving, the lust, the avarice, the going after, manipulating, doing all the different variations of that. And the next one is, uh, is it Upa something or other? Anyone want to tell me? Well said. What does it mean? Upadana. I believe that's Sanskrit. And it is to abandon, actually abandon the feeling, which is present in your mind as an object of meditation, as an ob object of awareness, and abandon that feeling regardless of its intensity of pleasure, intensity of pain, of pain, and go for shutting down on it or reaching out and pulling it in, grasping. Well, I want that. I need that. I have to have that. I deserve that all these mini lectures in the ego stream in the seventh consciousness of the eight consciousnesses. The seventh one wants stuff and doesn't want other stuff. I want, I'll take that, but keep that shit away from me. Literally. What, what do we do with that? Observe it. Obey nothing. Don't do as you're told by your mind stream. Receive, 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 receive. And the outflow, which would be the grasping, the outflow could show up in a different way. It could show uh, uh, as an outflow of complete understanding. The outflow could be tied into an aspect of receiving, an, an, an aspect where consciousness begins to see what this is. Not a self seeing it, not someone seeing it. You're no longer fueling the ego mind by getting what you want. Success. I have it. I think I have it. Upadana. Then you then it goes into what? Baba? Becoming. So as soon as you get it, immediately we, we go into it takes you, it's just like grabbing the old fashioned image of the uh, or uh, the old merry go rounds back in the nineteen twenties would go around and you would it wouldn't, uh, OSHA wouldn't allow these these days to reach out and grab a ring off from the merry-go-round. Reach out. That's uh, Upadana. And then Baba is, then you're, you're on the merry-go-round. You, you grabbed on to something you thought you wanted. And what does that do? It takes you somewhere else. And in the, if you keep going, it takes you uh, into Jati. Isn't that the next one? Jati is birth. And I'm going to stop right there because I would like you to hear the complete elaboration on these 12 links on Saturday. Come to these monk talks. Ask questions. The timing will be a, bit, a little bit different from that, from other, from past uh, monk training days. And I don't know how that will be set up, but it will be more conditional, situational. That's how this works. We'll decide as we go. So the sitting practice of meditation, if you haven't
caught on is about watching this happen in your mind stream, watching the emotion come up and watching how we personalize it. We make it into our emotion. It is not your emotion. It, it, is, it is emotion. It is feeling. First, there's contact. Something happens. Some, it could, the contact could be somebody walks into the room you haven't seen in a few months, but you, the, your last uh, skirmish with them was very painful because they mistreated you. Suddenly, they're back here. It's like the first thing you might think in your mind, what the hell are they doing here? Now, they might be coming back to apologize to you. You're not going to give them a chance to do that. You like that feeling of hatred towards them because that makes you feel like somebody going somewhere, somebody that's not going to put up with anything. I'm not putting up with that. You all know what I'm talking about. You have your own version of what I just I did a poor imitation of. You have to be responsible for what shows up in the mind. Contact, feeling. You could also say you've been triggered. So feeling comes up because something out here triggered something that has been sitting uh, around the corner, six feet back, under the clothes hamper. Your emotion is being stored in a safe place, so you don't have to experience that feeling. So that means the feeling has got a hold of you, and the desire to get rid of it has gotten a hold of you, and the grasping has gotten a hold of you, Upadana has gotten a hold of you, and you've done what? Stuck it under the clothes hamper. You feel that? Shut down on it. This happens in countless, 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 countless little microcosm, little tiny movements in our lives that overlap and underlap all kinds of ways. And the trajectory is only fairly clear or linear for just a short while. And then it, then it goes back into the, the illusion of otherness. What can we do? What can we do? What we can do is strengthen your awareness that observes the movement of anything in the consciousness that observes but doesn't grasp. I like this. I don't like it. It's good. It's bad. It shouldn't be there. The awareness that just has a, a an, um, not an indifference, but a lack of particularly per personalizing anything. You train your mind to do that by sitting down, practicing shikantaza, Watch what moves in the mind stream without reaching, without grasping. Feeling may show up. That's what's showing up. But the grasping is actually the upadana is actually the first outflow. The feeling has an outflow has an outflow dynamic in that this happened and you are starting to produce feelings. But that is uh, tied in more closely with the karma that comes into your mind stream when you were born or when you were uh, left work last week or when someone triggered you. So it's very complicated in that area. You aren't gonna, going to be able to find a self anywhere. There's nobody that's, there's the feeling, there's the anger. There's a lashing out, the outflow, but there's no person there. There's no personhood. That is unreal. When you have an intense feeling of anger that is against someone else, it is unreal. It has a, a relative reality to it, but the ultimate nature of that is unreal. And your ultimate nature is not has no status as somebody. It just looks that way. That's the grand illusion of personhood. The Buddha said 2,500 years ago, no personhood. There's no solid being anywhere. There's no being in this context, form, feeling, perception, concept, consciousness. Do not get together and form a, a military unit, a squad to conquer, conquer the world. In the Marine Corps, they call it a fire team. <clears throat> a fire team leader, a Browning automatic rifle one, rifleman, and an assistant Browning automatic rifleman, and a rifleman. And they all functioned as a unit, like the five, five skandhas do, a unit to get somewhere, do something, kill somebody, protect somebody. The ego does that 
with the five skandhas. So to go back to this, receive, just look at the, this kind of a mudra or gesture, just, just receive this, receive it. And, and if you not start to notice you're starting to clamp down, this is the very nature of ego is to grasp. Ego does not receive unless there's something in it for that so-called identity that is aligned with or has promoting, I'm a really good receiver. I can really very helpful to people. Very easy to fool yourself, especially if you've meditated for a while and think you're on to something and think that you can just, you know how to help people. You can just go out and help people. Just meet them where they're at and help them. You don't need all this mind training stuff. Had enough of this. I'm just going to go out and just be really nice and be really kind to everyone. Go ahead. You can do that if you want. If you've not recognized the circularity of your mind, if you, if you think that your mind is going in a straight line towards you see what's true and don't really need any other help, you really see what this is. Maybe if any time you have any conclusion in your mind about yourself or about anybody else, this is delusion. I don't care how sophisticated it is. The whole world is operating out of their bright ideas about the nature of everything. <clears throat> if you have any ideas about anything that you think are true, this is the very nature of delusion and suffering and is the cause of suffering. And as I've said more than once, I was going to say hundreds of times, I'll just say more than once, do whatever the hell you want. Get your own authority. If you think you have authority, go, go do it. I'm not here to, I won't debate anybody about anything. Okay, I'll take some questions. Come on. Don't let me lay here. Doze off to sleep, yes. When you're bowing in the 12 links, then can you stop at any of the links and not proceed? I'm not sure. Perhaps these are, this is just a, a model for, for what seems to be happening in the mind. It's broken down into parts. So these situations don't actually exist or function as some kind of little compartment of consciousness is, that is made up of this thought about that thought about that or has boundaries that are uh, constructed of concepts. It's just a way of looking at it that will help you to contemplate it, see the way the mind feels. And then instead of just staying with the feeling, not maintaining, you don't have to maintain it, just receive. If you're receiving the feeling, there's nothing to maintain. It maintains itself. And it doesn't, won't look like maintenance. Right. When you mind, will that receiving then also cease? Mind? What? Well, you said if you receive the feeling and you just receive the feeling, receive the feeling, does eventually the receiving cease along with the feeling? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Is that maintenance though? Could be. Anytime you maintain anything, you give it a you give it a an artificial shell that makes it look like it's staying holding still. And this is the very nature of this is this is the way opinions are formed. They're hideouts for ego. You, know, you have an opinion on something, you don't have to investigate it anymore because you have an opinion based on what you thought 20 minutes ago or three hours ago, or what you, what you studied at university or what your mom and dad taught you, any number of things that relative truths and constructs or concepts, judgments about 
your life or others or more? Um, just the recent shooting in Highland Park. So if we put that on the model of the 12 links, it looks like that young man was extremely disturbed and even to the point where he had considered taking his own life a couple of years ago. And obviously he didn't have mind training. So it, does, did he have any control over his behavior? Uh, Maybe some, but the, the, the very, the very uh, incarnation of that being not only his original difficulty of not really having any fundamental help, who knows what the input he got from his parents who had their difficulties with the culture and with their own conditioning and lack of understanding or buying into some kind of a, a political path or a spiritual path or that, was, that did not help him with his fundamental nature, but just caused him to hook on to some kind of a belief system. I'm not saying that, that, that it's incorrect, it's, it's a way of practicing, but quite often it just gives you something to hang on to while you wait for death to come. Might be very comfortable while you're doing it. It could be quite comfortable. Heaven realm. Some people spend their whole life in a particular state of mind we call the heaven realm. Not wrong, but it's, ma it's uh, maintained and it will come apart when the body starts to die. I'm not saying the person might be get flashes of their deity in the sky or something like that. Maybe, but impermanent. Go ahead. Valley. Go ahead, Junju. I think you said ego. Louder, please. I think you said ego can't receive unless there's something in it for the ego. It feels like my ego is always in play. That's awareness. You feel like your ego is always in play. You're aware of it. What's your question? Can we just receive the ego? Eventually, you, you'll see that it's unreal. That's how it's probably going to show up. There may be very variations with your patterning or your, your path that won't happen for someone else. Most important thing you can do is return to the wall. Since you're here, you're, in, you're observing this form. You've received vows and just use the structure that's been taught for thousands of years so that you can do this. What is it that receives the ego. So, so all, all your, when you say receives the ego, or when I said, if I said that, I'm just saying you just see that it's unreal. Consciousness does, but it's not an identity. What is talking right now is consciousness. Not, not an old monk. The old monk is, is the structure to to give that some kind of presence. But this understanding is without a self, without another. It's not a bragging point for, to, for you to say, oh, look how, look how wonderful I am. I'm enlightened or something like that. I don't say that. I don't promote it. And I, I can't guarantee you anything or myself anything. I could explode right now. My head could blow off. I could go insane. Possible. This is, this is a relative situation we're in. There is no guarantee of anything. And if you start going around judging things based on right and wrong, you're just going to continue to swarm, go in the same uh, lemming situation that the rest of the world is doing. Right and wrong, right and wrong, right and wrong. You have to do it yourself. You can't get your identity by judging others and backing away from them. You follow me? Anybody? Am I following anything? Does it look like I'm obeying anything or following anybody? As I say, come and get me. I'm saying, don't let me get away with you. If you think I'm bullshitting you, then come and come this way. I'm not looking for a fight particularly, but I'm saying, if you think there's something happening here that is untrue or somehow what I'm saying is off in some way, let's talk about that. Go ahead. 
how do we receive when it feels like we don't have control over receiving? But see, that's that's the awareness. I mean, for you to just ask that question, that's why this whole situation is so important to have someone who's understands this a little deeper than you do. Maybe not completely. I don't know if there is a, such a thing as complete. But I have an understanding about what you're asking about and what I'm noticing. When you say that, you sound, you're, you're, the ego mind is like, I don't, you know, I don't understand this. But what I'm hearing is, is you, you understand you're actually watching that you couldn't describe that. Describe it again. Let's hear it again. How do we receive when we don't have control? Yes. The, the awareness that you don't have control is receiving. But there's no, there's no, there's no uh, treat at the end. There's no snack. There's no, here, you did good. Here, no, there's nothing. It's kind of a, a flat feeling of, of, of failure, of not being able to do this. You watch your own mind. You watch your own mind. You say, I'm just saying something in place of you. You say, I don't know how to do this. I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. That's it. That's the spiritual path. That's what I'm uh, in, uh, encouraging all of you to do. Everyone has their own dynamic. People here might not be able to even maybe relate to what you're saying. Their particular form of seeing the three poisons might be different than yours. But you're seeing it. And, you, and your question was, how do we, how do we? And I say, return to the wall, return to the teacher, return to the teaching, which we, I've, over the years, have found how important it is to study this material a lot. Give the ego mind something to crunch on, something to chew on. These concepts, reading the Lankavatara Sutra is very frustrating. I think we're in our third session of going through this. We've studied this together as a Sangha, as a community, three times. That is a very difficult sutra, as is the Samdhina Marchana Sutra, let alone the Heart Sutra, the Diamond Sutra, a little bit more straightforward. But if you go into those very long, you see those are difficult also. And another sutra that's very difficult is the Lotus Sutra, Sadharma Pandurika. It's valuable, but it's difficult to really, really grok that. Really, really understand that yourself. Go ahead. If we're watching how much we are grasping, yes. are we feeling the grasping? Nope. Just watch. If you're uh, leaving the grasping uh, for trying to stop it, it's about being aware of the grasping. You have to start somewhere. So we can't start back here at the hitching post and just never get on the horse. It's not going to work. You're, you're going to have to see the whole thing. You're going to have to witness the whole thing. The feeling comes up, the desire to, it could be some desire to get rid of something, or the feeling comes up, desire, desire to get something. So let's say it's a, you get rid of something. The feeling comes up of irritation or frustration or jealousy. And instead of just feeling that, it has no personhood to it. It's impersonal. It's just dependently risen. As I've said hundreds of times, if it shows up in your mind stream, it's yours. It doesn't mean it belongs to you. It just means that it is, it is your, uh, uh, your apartment complex. It's your, it comes in the, one, because you're a meditator, all these doors and windows, the, the walls of the mind have started to come off. It takes a while. So then the karma that you've been able to keep out, or at least divert or blame someone, eventually gets into that part of the conscious, that part of the consciousness in which there's no particular grasping, rejecting, or shutting down, no passion, aggression, ignorance. It's quite an open area. So that comes in, and then you can't control it. You can't feel like you're losing control. There's so much openness there because of your meditation practice. You are finally experiencing something that most people don't experience. They might experience like you don't have control, but that's because they're in the middle of wrestling around with it. But if you're a meditator, you're probably not wrestling around with much. You're just feeling like crap because you can't control 
the emotions that come in and cause disturbance in your mind stream. It's painful to have be disturbed and have no have no way to get rid of it, other than an outflow to blame someone, which you might do occasionally. Or to blame yourself, which is another kind of outflow. I can't, I'm never going to get this. I can't understand this, this, and so on and so forth. More? When you're bowing, uh, the title of your talk is The Palm and the Fist. Yes. Did I miss the fist? Thank you. So the palm is this. And uh, so we have a, a feeling receiving it. And then we have the desire about the feeling, which could be to, to get, get more of it, reach out for more of it. Uh, and we could have um, the feeling that uh, the desire that we don't like that. It's a negative feeling. We like, we like that to go away. And, but as long as you're just uh, feeling the feeling and also feeling the desire, which, which tends to move away from the feeling into wanting to stop it, wanting more of it, wanting less of it, wanting to be done with it, wanting to ignore it, wanting, 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 desire, 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 Krishna. Instead of just staying and not maintaining, not to maintain anything, but just feel the desire. If you feel it, if you're feeling, if you're feeling the feeling, and then you're feeling the desire, which is extremely uh, close to and linked to that, might not be able to really even differentiate with the, if the desire and the feeling are both intense. And then they have this kind of a, a situation. They're open. De desire is open. It's very soft, and it might be it might be uh, intense. It might be causing your self centeredness to want to go into action to blame somebody or get rid of something or stop something or get more of something or you name it, name a direction, all 15 of them, all 360 of them. Those directions are all going away from the desire into Ubadana, grasping, that's the fist right there. And that is the one that, that, that secures the ego in place. That fist and that fist, if you've been through this over and over and over, and every time this happens, there's another fist. And those fists all come together in the seventh consciousness, which is the palatial mind, the ego mind, the self-centered mind, and reinforce that identity. I'm just trying to paint a picture that has some kind of tinker toy structure to it. It really doesn't. There, there, are, there are no solid, uh, strong connections between things. But we, I, we talk about, I'm talking about it that way, so we can have some discussion. It has to be done with the awareness. So therefore, the sitting practice of meditation allows you to watch how the mind does this type of thing, goes through this. How to set up this against that duality, this, me, against that stuff, or me for that. Go ahead, Chisho. Chisho Bhavi. Uh, does awareness function or happen outside of the body-mind complex? Bobby? Awareness has no location. So I have no proof for this, but I don't have to have proof. You don't have to have proof. No one has to have proof if you know that there's no location. It tends to hang around the body because that's where, uh, where it first uh, uh, found a uh, uh, life raft or became into incarnation as a being when when uh, we were before we uh, entered the womb or perhaps after it's a it's a, a situation that science is still looking for something there they're trying to locate the consciousness if you read any book on uh, on consciousness uh, if it's not written by a, 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 a either a, someone with a, a lot of experience working with uh, awareness directly, then you're going to get uh, kinds of stylizations that have to do with physics and so on like that. Really interesting material, but it's it's not the spiritual path. The science has a ways to go before it finally understands that it's going to have to be a spiritual path, not just a man, one, not just a path of concepts. Uh, the, the, uh, the awareness has to lead rather than uh, the awareness tagging along. Uh, 
three boxcars behind the engine, which is the intellect or the structure or the thinking process, just to using some ideas or some images. So, but uh, awareness doesn't have any location. It's not a thing. It has no, it, it can't, it can't come into being, can't pass out of being. I can sit here. You can do this too. I would say, uh, I'll count to three and everybody move their awareness uh, to the planet Jupiter. But just let, no, let's just go to one of the moons. Anybody know a name of one of the moons of Jupiter? No? We don't have a single astronomer? <laughs> Europa? Oh, yeah. Europa? It's, that's named after a pile of ropes. Your ropes or my ropes? Okay, so let's go to Europa. One, two, three. What's it like for you guys? See what I'm saying? I mean, there is a, there's a qua notice. Now notice about this is I'm just not being, I'm being a little silly, but not completely. Notice that, that all I have to do is say, is say with confidence, which I have a bunch of it. One, two, three, and you go there. And there's no way to prove that you got there. There's no way to prove that you didn't get there because we're, we're, we are working in a realm that is called the intermediate state, that as soon as your body mind drops, you're going to get a good dose of the intermediate state. And the consciousness that shows up there, if it's still attached to a body, if you're not dropped off body and mind, you'll still manifest as a body and walk around. You might even haunt buildings if you still think you're a living being called a ghost. How do I know that? I don't know. I read about it, I guess. Further questions? No. If you're um, able to see the fist, is there a way, would you, is it helpful to open it up? I'm not saying there aren't things that you can do. To the, the, the best thing, because it, it's a visual kind of image, one of the best things you can do, uh, and it depends on where you're at on the path. If you've been, you're a monk, so if you're a monk, then probably the best thing for you to do is prostration. Is somehow, it doesn't have to be to a, a person, although that might be the best thing, but it could be just an image of the Buddha. Just uh, prostrate to the Buddha. There's no one there. It's a, this is a piece of wood carved in the shape of a man who apparently lived 2,500 years ago. He'd probably be, wouldn't be too happy with that image of himself. So it's a, we, don't, we don't have to go into the, some kind of a personhood of the Buddha. It's, it's, it's what the Buddha saw and was able to convey to those who gave him audience. He, he was able to point to the complete under unreality of this world, that it is an illusion, and that the illusion of a self is unreal, even though there are bodies, the illusion of other or the separation is unreal, vividly unreal. So the other way with the fist is to just be aware of that and notice the clenching quality of it and don't don't fight with it because you fight with it, what it does is it'll cover up the ego is that, that structure of the mind that is so in love with itself, admires itself, and has so much pride for all that it knows and does, including how, how ashamed it is for things it can't quite live up to. Shame is just another aspect of pride. It's the, the hidden kind. You know about that. It has to be fundamentally seen. You just have to see it. And if you, if you see it without pushing it away, aggression. If you see it without explaining it, validating it, justifying it, or blaming anybody else for anything at all, abandoning what you see, consciousness, 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 awareness, awareness, awareness. And you also don't cover it up with any other conclusions or thoughts. It cannot continue. It, com it just comes apart because it gets its sustenance, its nutrition, and its whole structural dynamic of passion, aggression, ignorance from warfare, from fighting or from making peace. You can make peace with everything. I'll just be at one. I'll be at one with everything. I'll be at peace with everything. You cannot pull this off. Maybe 20 years, but death comes without warning. And if you have not understood what this is, 
I'm not sending you to hell necessarily, but it can be challenging when it, when the time comes when the body mind complex falls apart and goes back into the elements. In other words, you die. It can be a difficult time. Is another name for the um, Nidanas, could it be also samsara? So in other words, when you see the fist and you do nothing with it, you, you break the chain bound? I wouldn't get too literal about it, but that's the beginning of it. You just, you're not concerned with your image of yourself. You never no longer have so much pride that you've got to be a person who has no fists. You've got to be a person who doesn't grasp, so you do it with identity. There are there are whole programs out there that will train you not to be aggressive. They'll train you to do this, to that, and the other thing. But And it's not that they don't work some uh, for a while in some ways, depending on the karma, depending on the causes and conditions, on the conditioning that one person has, whatever has happened to them. It's not that you, you couldn't have some success. So you're a therapist. You work with people. You meet people where they're at. They were ready, ready to meditate. You probably teach them how. I think they were interested, but if they have no interest, there's no, you just meet them where they're at, work with their mind where it's at and get, and help them get as much relief as they can, and, uh, depending on whatever dynamic they're in. Uh, my teacher, Trung Parampache, because uh, when I say because, I, I immediately stopped myself because I have no idea where what he was, uh, his structure and understanding of the West was very bizarre to me. It was a, at once a, absolutely a genius, and the other way it was he was just, I felt like he was uh, confused. Was he confused? No, I just said it. I felt like he was confused. Was he confused? No. Seemed like it, but no. I don't know. I don't know what he was. But yet he seemed to have a misunderstanding about the West. And so therefore, uh, he, for instance, didn't see, at least initially, didn't see the value of a uh, a therapy and, and psychoanalysis and all that kind of shut down on that immediately. Now, later they developed a, a Naropa Institute, uh, began to teach Buddhist psychology. So I didn't attend any of those classes. Uh, so I don't know what happened there. Maybe he made friends with it. So meeting people where they're at, that means that as a therapist, you also have the ability and the uh, um, the backup of your own mind training so you can at least not make things worse for that person. In other words, you're not going to project your own uh, uh, emotional dynamics onto them. You see, you meet someone where they're at because you've been working on that with yourself. So you can see more clearly what they're dealing with. And you can actually see, maybe even see more a way in which to help them that doesn't necessarily line up with some kind of protocol you've been taught. So you might have been taught, um, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, or uh, you know, name any one of the 150, 60 therapies. You might have been taught that, and then you see, no, with this person, this needs to be happening in a different way. This person, I just need to. This person just needs somebody to listen to them. I don't need any suggestions. Am I getting close to what you're asking about? Or did I forget what you were asking about? So saying stuff I wanted to say. More? Yeah. Sir. Shogabai, earlier you said that you could go, uh, your head could explode and you could go completely insane. Of course. So could you. Sometimes I think you did. <laughs> no, go ahead, please. It, it was, it was meant, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely, but it's hard to say with anyone what, what they're going through. They're, especially people who are looked up to and are, are on pedestals and so on. When they have any difficulty with anything, you know, we start to, whether it's in the Buddhism or Christianity or any kind of area, politics too, anything where somebody's a leader for a while and then something goes awry and they start to act different or act selfish or greedy or anything like that. So it's, it's causes and conditions. You, you do not, as Junchi was saying earlier, you do not have control. You just do the best we can. Try to train your mind. Try to see as clearly as you can. 
And if you see, if you see pretty clearly, you might function as a teacher for some people. There's no guarantee of anything. I don't promise anything to anyone. I don't think. Has anyone here been promised anything by me? Why the hell are you even here? You're here because of your own insight, not just because of mine, because something that is being said here, either through this person or through the, the community or the way we're working with these traditional texts that go back, goes back some of them thousands of years, that seem to have an understanding that goes beyond the ragged and rough edges of materialism, of trying to make a living, get a job, uh, get get ahead in life, uh, you know, all of the things that are that have a value, but they they also ignore the deeper understanding of what it is to be a living being. Shukrabhain, is that potential of insanity different? from circularity that we're... It is just its own circularity. It's just like we're doing all doing the best we can, and don't, we are totally ignoring that we're about to, to blow up our planet. Uh, nuclear warheads everywhere. All it takes is just one mistake anywhere, and you, have a, uh, you don't have a Chernobyl, you have 5,000 Chernobyls, which means that's the end of the world. Uh, they're the biggest nuclear power plant right now in Europe is in uh, Ukraine. Isn't that true? So two things. One of them is stay away from that nuclear power plant. The other thing is go there. That's probably the safest place to be. Because probably they're, they're going to do everything, everything they can not to hit that. It will ruin everything. There will not be a country left for uh, whatever that guy is that runs Russia. I don't want to say his name too much. For him to actually take over. So it might be just best to go live, relatively speaking, to just go live there for a while. You follow me? So not, nothing is guaranteed. It's to, to, for anybody to guarantee anything to anyone is just, uh, what's the intention for doing it? Why would you ever say that to someone? Do this and I guarantee this will happen. <clears throat> Don't do that. There's no way to tell. If you're a Buddhist, if you're a meditator, if you take this path seriously, return to the vow. Return to refuge in the Buddha is the example of someone who seemed to be sane. If you read his teachings, return to the teaching, which is his teachings or other lineage holders, and return to the com community. That is studying this material and trying to understand in as deep a way as possible what it was the Buddha was pointing at. Everything is dependently risen. There are no sing singular beings anywhere. That is an incredible uh, illusion. It has to be realized. You have to see it yourself. It's not something, a concept to believe in. And return to the teacher or guide, if there happens to be one, who can has a little bit more experience than you do and can tell you when you're going around in circles in your own self-centeredness or pride or shame and how you can work with that. Other questions? So when we um, see ourselves grasping, do we stay with the feeling of grasping or the desire? Is it, is it separate from the desire for the grasping? So um, that's a good, good question. So just when you see it, if you see it and you name it, this the name it is grasping. Just look at the grasp. Don't stop it. Don't correct yourself. But any kind of correction uh, is not about stopping something that already has momentum, uh, uh, because then it t the ego mind, which is present all the time, comes in and gets credit for that, and it also it gets uh, uh, the blame if it fails, and ego doesn't care. The fundamental structure of ego, which is uh, an imaginary self, really doesn't care if it's success or failure. As long as it knows something has happened about him or her or them. This is why you have weird situations of uh, masochism and sadomasochism, and things where people seem to go the other way and torture themselves 
in order to get uh, the effect of being somebody like people who uh, uh, um, some people put uh, piercings. I'm not here to judge anybody. You can stick all kinds of stuff in yourself if you want to. But that is one way of actually feeling something, you feeling something and also decorating yourself. So it's a, a way of embellishing something, the body. Is this wrong? No, not incorrect. I'm not against that. I have a mama. I have a tattoo. I'm not saying it's incorrect, but it's a way, it's an area where you can look into and then look at your intention around anything you do. Uh, you know, any anything will give you some feeling of what your ego mind, your self-centered mind is up to on some level. Intention. Anything you do, anything, anytime you go into anything, look at the intention more. On the mind, in the, uh, like on the cushion, when you see the grasping, is it helpful or possible to see the desire and the feeling? You know, so basically see three of the links at once. Following. It is. <laughs> it would be possible to see that. And that would show up differently with each person. Maybe, maybe you're, if you're sitting a lot, maybe you could back into that. Maybe you could see how that works. See how it works almost mechanically. But do nothing with it. It's always about awareness, never about a success. It's a, it's, even though we, we talk about it and we talk about the structure of it, of um, uh, feeling, uh, feeling, uh, contact, feeling, craving, and grasping, uh, it's, it's, it's not about getting that whole thing to stop by interceding somewhere. It's about being aware of that. And the, the awareness point that seems to be important, from the way I understand it, is the point where you leave you abandon the craving and go to the grasping where it's taught most traditions and most teachers will teach uh, you need to see it before so that you don't have any more craving and i would include the craving i would say you there's nothing there's no problem with the craving but some teachers say, say it even says it traditionally i think in the the links that we printed out from the internet will say you need to see where the the feeling uh, starts to generate uh, desire for something else. Go ahead. Um, I'll come back. If we look at that um, the gap, I think, um, in that link, at craving and grasping, the way that you're talking about it, can we go back from that um, and see that uh, gap from feeling to desire? So one of the teachings, as you, you've been studying this, so you probably know, is uh, like the Buddha has talked about as he saw sickness, aging, and death. He left, uh, escaped his uh, father's uh, guards or whatever and went out into the street in the village, uh, but he'd been protected from by his father, the king. He saw... Uh, someone who was very ill, and he saw someone who was extremely old. He hadn't seen really old people, and then he saw a corpse. And then the other way it's sometimes talked about is he also saw uh, a mendicant or a sannyasin or someone who was on a spiritual path, saw a monk. And so he saw those uh, three, three marks, four marks of existence, that those are three things that happen. And the last one being, you could actually study that you could actually train yourself to see what the sickness aging death actually is. And then he went work backwards through that as, as the tradition says, actually, then he went back and saw birth. And then before birth, he saw uh, Baba becoming. And before that he saw Upadana and before that he saw uh, Trishna and before that he saw feeling and then contact. And then on back to the, to the first one, which is ignorance ignorance of uh, of just an op the open dimension of everything. So traditionally, it's talked about that way. I've never had that kind of experience. I, it's, those links have been helpful to me, but been very difficult for me to understand. I seem like I understand it, but they kind of blow me away. I think they're powerful teaching. That's why we're studying it. It's tra traditional teaching. We're going to study the traditional teaching. And the idea that some people, this is really going to be helpful to you, 
To other people, it might be, oh, this just seems like a big wad of concepts. It gets kind of mushy the more you look at it. You? Probably not with you. Which, uh, which links do you have? Five and six. Six cent spaces and contact. Good one. It's a good one. Should be interesting talks. I'm looking forward to it. What? What about my, uh, you say to when we kind of watch the fist and then we could potentially feel the, the desire, the craving, and the feeling. What about looking at the grasper or the desirer? Or the feeler. Yeah, that shows up. Watching what, watching what moves when you, when you see, uh, when you see, um, well, just say grasping, or let's say if you see a uh, desire, and you just see the desire, and you don't go towards grasping, you just witness the desire. Uh, then the passion, aggression, ignorance around that tend to kind of come apart. They need reinforcement. So at that time, you will begin, and there's no guarantee, but you will begin spontaneously to look for someone who feels that way. And sometimes I say it this way, the feeling can come in, but allow the feelings and emotions to come in instead of do, trying to do something with them, including up to and including the grasping. So just a way of talking about it, but it just seems that the link that's, that the important one in there is to, when you have the feeling, but you just don't have outflows, you have, you have outflows in your mind stream, you have a feeling, and then there's an outflow that shows up as wanting something else, wanting something different, which is the, the Four Noble Truths of the Buddha. The second Noble Truth is desire, Krishna, or wanting something else, wanting something different. That's the second, that causes suffering. So to actually witness that, see that, feel that, be that situation without any resort to anything else, that starts, the, what starts to come apart part there is the imputation that there is someone, that there's some other. That's when duality, the construct of duality, which is a big lie, we use a modern phrasing. It's untrue. It's separated a lot, but fundamentally not separate. It would, it would feel, it feel, if you see what this is, it feels like when you're, when you talk and you hear someone else, not someone else, but you don't hear, you know that you're not a person who's talking. You just hear, your, you hear what you're saying at the same time everyone else hears it. So you don't sit back and make stuff up. Think up stuff. And Divine, on that note, um, I read or heard that, uh, Second noble truth is both pointing to the link one and um, the desire. So their original ignorance of seeing other, avidya. Is that true? Yeah, samskaras. You know, avidya is samskaras. Is that what you're asking? That, that when you, when the open dimension begins to close down, ignorance, then formations happen which lead to consciousness. And there's, not, there's nothing scientific there. You can't take that and squeeze it in such a way that you can figure out exactly what it is and replicate it somewhere. At least I, I don't think you can. Any, uh, any other uh, questions on Zoom? There's 30 people out there. Any questions from anyone? Kozan, you have any questions? Not at the moment, thank you. Cheers on. Augie. My gosh. Okay, I'm gonna if you if somebody doesn't show up here, I'm gonna have to call on Shoka because he's got his hand up. And you know you don't want to hear what his question is. <laughs> okay, Shoka, go ahead. <laughs> He forgot. <laughs> no, he didn't forget. Go ahead. Shogabine, when we are looking at the absence of a self, uh, we're breaking down 
breaking that down into these kandas. When there's the imputed otherness that we're projecting, is can that be broken down conceptually to be seen? How would you, if you're going to go that way, say that's true, how would you start to see that occur? Because something there is tweaking that for you in such a way that you can ask that question. Not, nothing there. Let me help you here. Paraphrase what you said. Say, say the same thing, but rearrange the words, the, the question in a different way. Sure, Ryan. Can otherness be broken down into parts? So I, I might be missing what you're asking about, but I, because it's obvious what I'm going to say to you, and I would think that you could see this too. So it makes me think there's something else you want to know. That's why I sometimes say, what do you want to know? So I can get close, but I'm saying, obviously, otherness is all these guys, these people, the trees. Look at one tree. How many leaves are on a tree? You want to find out about relative truth? Go out and count stuff. Let me count the leaf, find a tree. It's a simple project. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you a find, <clears throat> give it, make it easy. Find uh, a peach tree. Now, you notice I didn't give you an oak tree. Find a peach tree, forget the peaches, but just count the leaves on it. That's all, count all of them. Don't pull them off, don't damage the tree. Count them, put a, maybe put a little, I don't know, maybe a paper clip on each one. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm being silly, but what I'm saying is it is incredibly vast. It's countless, countless things. And I mean, everything from uh, a kernel of uh, uh, a corn to a thought you had three weeks ago about which, whether to use an, um, an envelope with a letter or write on a postcard to mail to your friend. Just that little situation there is, is a separate dharma. That is, it shows up in, as far as relative truth is other, it's otherness, otherness, otherness is everywhere. That's why it is such an incredibly profound and difficult delusion because the ego mind looks at this and says, this is, there's no way this is a delusion. This is real. I just stubbed my toe on a, an imaginary uh, doorway or, or uh, going downstairs to the basement. I, I slipped. That seems so incredibly real because we're we're all all the, our, our consciousness is so hooked into all of these nerve endings, just the ones of touch, not to mention the ones of sight and hearing and smell and taste and thinking. We're receiving thoughts, receiving feelings, receiving sounds, receiving sights, receiving sights, receiving sights, and you're receiving thoughts. You do not think things. Things happen situationally, relatively, and they are dependently risen. Your thought patterns are dependently risen. Realize it. Realize it. You'll, you'll see that your mind just stops going in circles. It also doesn't light any, anywhere. It's, your mind turns into kind of like a hummingbird. Everything's a flower. Everything you see is a flower. Everything you think is a poem. Is this some kind of exotic, romantic kind of thing that I'm promoting to you? That I'm going to charge you for it later? No, it's just the truth. But it's difficult for me to say it that way. I'm not difficult, but it's, it may not be helpful because I need to point to the difficulty. Because otherwise, if I point to the uh, starry night or the center of the sunlit sky, it's too soon. You need to first look at the desolation. You need to first look at the second noble truth of the Buddha. Life is suffering. We have to look at that. And I'm not even going to apologize for it. I'm just going to say, you can do this. You can look at that and you can realize your true nature where, where, where everything in the mind stream is understood at once. At, at once. You understand. You have no more questions. No promises. 
Was there, we know you have a further question. I'm just trying to get a grasp on the 12 links. Is it, is it similar to uh, Dogan's teaching of firewood doesn't become ash? Can we look at each of the 12 links in that manner? Yes. Everyone, that, that's a, that teaching is profound. And is it just that teaching alone shows you what an astonishing Dharma teacher in, in living in medieval Japan in the, th in the 13th century. And yet he, something about going to see Ru Jing in, in, uh, in Song Dynasty China and meeting him uh, between who he was and who Ru Jing was, he realized his true nature and came back to Japan and started a monastery in the 13th century, of which this is a Soto Zen monastery. It may not live up to what uh, Soto Shu in Japan would think. If they saw it, they might be really embarrassed. <laughs> what do they got that Tibetan shrine over there for? They might say, perhaps. Ivan bowing. Yes, Ivan. You have lately um, been promoting the the um, um, mandala, as you call it, I believe. Mandala. Mandala. Man. It's like, it's like, hey, man. Like hey, that. Man. Man. It's mandala. Man. Yes. It's always, um, interesting. it's always interesting to make a joke like that and see who smiles and who doesn't. And I don't know whether it's, I, I just made a very bad joke or the person is daydreaming about something else. <laughs> but I'm watching you. Except for Soul Trim, I can't see you. So Karen, I can't see you. Brian Perry, I can't see you. Carl, Warren, Elizabeth, Jishin, Soul Trim, Wulong. You guys are all asleep somewhere. Oh, there's Jishin. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you, Carl. I mean, the other guy. I mean, <laughs> well, you guys, you guys both have uh, four letter names. Change them. My my name was Car Ivan, and his was I Carl, but uh, I Carl. Of my mother. So oh, I Carl, <laughs> Car Ivan. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Go ahead with your go ahead with your uh, your mandala uh, question. I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> Happen a lot tonight. <laughs> you guys are just humoring me. You're trying to, you're trying to make me feel better because my memory sucks. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> really, um, you have a uh, My question is, um, you you've um, asked us to support the the mandala, and um, and uh, and yet you also say don't talk about this stuff. So I was trying to reconcile those two. Good question. So when I say don't talk about it, I'm not saying you shouldn't discuss the Dharma with everybody. If you study the Dharma, but, but uh, we have people everywhere, not just in our 12 study groups. There are individuals that are getting together. I think, Gyokudo, aren't you studying with uh, Isaac here pretty soon? Gyokudo? Yeah. So people are getting together. Uh, I know, and studying Kozan, don't you study with different people uh, individually? Um, I used to. Okay, you used to. Yes, yeah, so spontaneously. Okay. Go ahead, please. Not as a formal um, scheduled thing. Okay. So I'm just saying, you know, you, you uh, what I'm trying to keep to a minimum is uh, gossip. So keep that to a minimum. And also uh, experiences you may have um, as a meditator, I, I would say to, to uh, try to talk to those experiences about those experience with other, other people, other uh, practitioners and so on. Uh, I'd keep it to a minimum, not that you can't, but I would just keep it to a minimum. But some of the material that is arising in your mind stream if you interact with others about it, especially questioning that, the person can come in and actually make comments on what you're doing that might actually feel good to you, but might take you away from what you need to be looking at yourself alone. 
I'm happy to respond to other questions. If you if you don't understand what I'm saying, you, you you'll always know if you're, you're by your intention. If you're dealing with something in your mind stream that's uh, difficult, uh, sometimes you really need to talk to somebody else. Somebody another time you might need to just work with that situation yourself. Uh, very early on, I began to understand this. Very very early on, is be very tentative about anything that's happening in your mind stream that you share with somebody else. This doesn't mean you don't sit around and talk about the Diamond Sutra or the Heart Sutra and what that means and what Red Pine is saying and how can we understand this or how can uh, some, uh, you know, it's not that we can't discuss that. I'm not saying that. Is that that difficult for, is there anyone else that has difficulty with that? Or is it just Ivan? (laughs) <laughs> yes, no? Go ahead. Thank you. That, that's uh, helpful. Good. Good. Well, you, you also say don't uh, tell people to meditate. Do I do. You have to bring that energy. I, yeah, I do. Themselves rather than you promoting. I yeah, don't that's... But, but they know you meditate, then... Then they may come and ask, well, how, how could you teach me to meditate? Absolutely, teach them to meditate based on what you've been taught. Now, you could talk to somebody about that. But I'm just saying convincing somebody that they should meditate because it will somehow help them. Then, then they're going to come back and try to, they're going to turn you into their meditation teacher, whether you like it or not. And that might not be easy to do. Yes. Divine. Is there also a possibility that people have looked at Buddhism as a cult, and so because they don't know what it is that, yeah. that can stir up? When you say don't talk about it, well, I don't mean I don't mean that. I'm just saying uh, don't no advertisements for it. Uh, other than if somebody asks you, has this helped you? Then you could just be very direct and say, yes, it helps. It hel- helps me. It helps me from keeps me from deceiving myself or fooling myself. Uh, keeps me honest, and it will keep you honest. Might not be all that comfortable, but if you're doing a lot of sitting meditation, very difficult to bullshit yourself about anything. Even if you haven't transcended your your uh, narcissism. So I'll take a final question about this open hand, receive, and uh, this uh, um, uh, feelings. And uh, desire, have this kind of a gesture. Desire, desire is not this. Th- this is uh, grasping. It's not that. The desire is very simple. The desire might be there for something to go away or get larger, get smaller, or whatever. And you may do nothing with it. You may just have that craving for that desire. First time I talked about that in an example, it was at uh, uh, years and years ago. I don't know, maybe somebody was here. I think Kozan was there, and I know Unya was there. There was a talk about a jelly roll, I think, where I said, uh, just, I don't even, Kozan, do you remember what I said about that jelly roll? He said, um, go on an ego diet and eat it with your eyes. Yeah. That's a good memory. (laughs) Yeah, just eat it with your eyes. Go ahead. Uh, if the feeling is fear, yeah. is the fear of finding, thinking it found a threat, is that the grasping? Say that again. When fear thinks it's found a threat, the threat that goes mm-hmm. with it, is that the grasping? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is the grasping. And just watch it. If you just look at it, you don't do anything with it. If it's an actual threat, it's going to it'll materialize even more could get even stronger but if you just look at it uh if it's if it's something you're generating uh through uh trying to do something with the feeling increase the paranoia grasping ego loves paranoia because then it gets to be somebody who's on guard and not gonna leave anybody and uh, strengthen the walls of the mind before the demons come and get us so don't do anything with it just be aware of the threat Think, uh, I'll take it a little bit further. Think how powerful, just use your imagination, how powerful you will be. This is not a compliment. As a Dharma teacher, 
if you're no longer at war with anything, if anything that comes in your mind stream, mind stream can't find a self that agrees, disagrees, or ignores, that's a Dharma teacher. So they're no longer manipulated by anything. They're completely fearless. Even if fear comes into their mind stream, fearless, you can't shake them, you can't scare them away, you can't stop them. And they can also go totally insane. Crazy wisdom form of the Buddhas of the three times, Dorje, Trollo, Karmapakshi, take this vow in meditation, whatever is seen with you. I don't know the whole thing. Whatever is seen with the eyes is vividly unreal and emptiness, yet they're still formed. This is not some kind of a quick fix. It's a spiritual path. Dedicate your life to it or meditate now and then. <laughs> It'd be easier. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I would, I would uh, help you no matter where you're at. You can be a weekend warrior. Or a weekend, what do we call it? Farmer. Yeah, weekend farmer. I don't use warrior. <laughs> Be a weekend farmer. Grow a lot of cattle. <laughs> or if you want to, if you actually have to do it, then grow beets. At least they've got blood in them. Can't get blood from a beet. Isn't that, is that a saying? <laughs> it's just, I just love to say things that are actually absolutely stupid people <laughs> laugh <laughs> very dumb okay let's let's close the halls of Montezuma